Morning, folks. I feel like I'm turning into Tony C. Smith. I'm just in the garden with my morning coffee. And uh, to be honest, I just needed to test it. <laughs> the new microphone is working. Thank you ever so much to my patrons who have just allowed me to literally <laughs> go online and just order a new one because, uh, yeah, it wasn't very long ago, but <laughs> I would have had to wait quite a long time before you had nice audio again. The plan today is tomatoes. It's tomato day. It's quite early and, oh my God, hay fever is kicking my butt at the moment. I'm not sure quite how <laughs> horrible my eyes look, but every now and then, there's normally a couple of weeks a year where despite having as much medication or herbal remedies, or, uh, you know, anything I can get my hands on, it just doesn't do it and I can barely see or breathe. So I was, it might sound a bit ropey today, but <laughs> we're gonna get it done. It's gonna be great. Mm. I just quickly have to show you this. Oh, in the back, in the garden as well, look. We've done the fences. <laughs> we got all the fences painted and ordered and I'm really happy about that. But there's just one thing that I have to show you in here. <laughs> the, the partial no mo may looks a bit, <laughs> looks a bit funky this year, but down here, just in the grass, there is one yellow rattle plant, just like at the plot. I can only see one for now, but I'm hoping that it means there might be a few more and we can get this established in the lawn, massively reduce the vigor of the grasses and let some flowers establish. It takes time though, it does take time. Anyway, let's go look at some tomatoes. They really are fit to bursting. Now they are <laughs> screaming, get me out of these one litre pots. So the mission for today is to get them loaded into this side of the greenhouse. And I think I'm gonna try and get them as close as possible whilst not packing them in so tight that they end up arguing with each other. I have also kind of forgotten that I have melons. Uh, I have some sugar rush melons, some Minnesota melons, cucumbers, <laughs> and as well, aubergines. Um, these are absolutely puny um, just because of the size of the pot. <laughs> really been trying to hold things back just because space is an issue. And to be honest, I went a bit crazy with the second greenhouse. As soon as I got it, I was like, yeah, let's plant loads and loads of stuff. And uh, it's not all gonna fit. I'm gonna be relatively sensible, okay? In the old days, <laughs> old JB would have literally crammed as much in here as possible. I'm gonna put the tomatoes 45 centimeters, which is still very close, but that's just within the realm of kind of reason. I'm gonna cram some cucumbers, some melons in here, hopefully as well. And I've been really busy in the other greenhouse. Let me just show you that very quickly. At the end of my monster chili video, I did say I was gonna spend a little while longer potting up some chilies. And to be honest, I got, <laughs> I got a bit carried away, get out of here. And the chili greenhouse is now pretty much taking shape. It's gonna be obscene having all of these on the floor. And I do want to get this shelf out as soon as possible. There's loads of things down here that are really ready to plant out. Really the main jobs are the tomatoes, getting these pots filled up. You can see some of them are done. A few at the back there on the table. These are done too but it's this, the tomatoes, and getting lots and lots of things in the ground. There is so much to do at the moment, but it does feel just about manageable. I'm not panicking too much, and one of the reasons is that all the things that need to be planted out, they're in quite big modules and they're in good compost, so they're not, you know, they're not on the verge of death or anything like that. I think they'll be okay when I plant them out, but <laughs> enough. Enough procrastinating. I've got to get in this very hot greenhouse. I was hoping to do this much earlier. I set an alarm for 6 a.m. <laughs> Slept straight through it, got up at eight. But uh, you know, we're trying. <laughs> trying. It's gonna be so hot in there, hence the vest today, apologies. <laughs> now what I've done is just cut a little 45 centimeter bamboo cane. And I was hoping I might be able to get kind of a double row. Um, you know, have one towards the front and one towards the back. And I just think that might be a little bit ambitious. So what I'm doing is going around putting little X's where I think it's gonna be. I'm gonna put like maybe a couple of cucumbers and then a couple of melons, like way too dense, not ideal, but just to kind of cram those in. And then I'm probably gonna to have to do a little bit of kind of diagonaling of the tomatoes so you can get a few more in. So I'm thinking maybe scrap everything I just said. What I've done is I've pulled this um, kind of piece of what will become hopefully a raised bed type thing and I put it on the actual slabs on the path. It does make it a little bit tighter in here, but that does just mean, where's my measuring stick, that I can now get a double row 
and that's going to be two, four, six, eight, and then probably ten, as opposed to seven if I went diagonally, like I was just showing you. Now, to be honest, um, ten tomatoes is a bit of an issue. Actually, I'll have the quagro here, so that's another four, that's fourteen. Then I'm going to have some basil underneath, and some marigolds, and some pots along here as well. So 14 tomatoes, I think that's okay. I'm going to take four home, grow some at home. I've got about 20 up here, I think. So actually, I think that is about right. I don't think that poses too much of an issue. Now it's just a case of actually spending a bit of time digging this out. And that is much easier said than done. What I'm going to be doing is adding a lot of uh, kind of compost to the base of the holes that I dig. And I do need to be slightly cautious because I don't want to undermine the foundation of the greenhouse here. In fact, what I might do is just kind of half dig these in. Oh, actually, they're only in, the tomatoes are only in one litre pots. Oh, this is gonna, it's gonna be so much easier than I imagined. I was thinking that I'd have to dig out, you know, massive holes for these five litre pots or anything. That's my chilies, not my tomatoes. The heat is getting through today. My brain is scrambled already, but that makes life much, much easier. The bulb planter will probably be just enough for the tomatoes. Not to sound too much like Captain Obvious, but uh, it's very warm in here. <laughs> so I've got some cucumbers and the melons in the end there. And one of the issues I've got, I'm thinking about supports for the tomatoes. Originally, I wanted to string them to the kind of frame of the greenhouse, and I did put in some wires, and I just don't really trust it. The thing about these greenhouses is they're really thin frames, and when you pull on the rafters, they flex quite a lot, and you can hear the glass is kind of under tension. I just don't like it. I don't think it's a good idea. So what I'm going to do is go with the old-fashioned bamboo canes, where you, you put them up, and then you tie some horizontal supports across them. It's very fiddly, um, but I think it's probably the, the best thing to do. And it's, it's good to do it now while I'm digging the ground. I've put those in, I've given them a little bit more room, and now I'm pretty confident that there's space for about 10 tomatoes in here. But the question is, what tomato varieties am I putting in here? And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna have a little look through and pick out the ones I think will do best in the ground. <laughs> The absolute chaos and disorganisation in here is incredible. I've got a load of outdoor ones here to make like paste tomatoes, that's the one. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've picked out ten, um, just by coincidence. I do, I think, want in the greenhouse. And then basically, in this tray over here, I've got all the, the spares and duplicates and extras. So the ten that I've picked out are all uh, unique. Don't fall over, please. Please. <laughs> no, there's nowhere flat to put it. I'm going to put this outside. Oh, God. They're going to go back home. In fact, I need four for the quadro as well, so I can bring four of those back ups back in. What have we got? Black Moon, Tamande, Black Chocolate, Black Moon again. We've got two of those, but that's fine because they're really quite cool looking. We've got some Brad's. Now, I mislabeled my Brad's Atomic and Brad's Fusion. I think that's what they are, but I just labelled all of these brads. And I tell you what, everyone always says brads look a bit spindly and rough compared to the rest, but my brads are looking really good. Touch wood, I've said that now, so they'll probably start to die as soon as I put them in the ground. We've got an orange accordion. That one is going to want a lot of water, so I might put that one there. Other ones that want lots of water. Black strawberry, we've got one of those yet? No, black chocolate, black strawberry, black moon. <laughs> A lot of black ones. And then we've got Sun Gold. I'm really excited to try that one. And, oh, this is an overwintered. Well, it's not actually overwintered. So this is one of the side shoots of the overwintered Crimson Crush. And speaking of side shoots, all of these are bursting with side shoots. They need a good prune. But I've got 10 here. This game in the ground is so hot. <laughs> Captain Obvious. This is tough. We are six down, four to go. And one thing that is non-negotiable, uh, something I absolutely have to do, and please remind me of this in the comments of future videos, keep me honest. What I really want to do is basically put some proper timber supports in here, attach them probably to the sleeper base, and basically have a few uprights that can go up, and then I can kind of string things across 
and then I'll have a bit of a more permanent support that is something to do in winter. There are loads of things that I had intended to do in this greenhouse before it got to this point. You know, I wanted to put in a proper raised bed. If I had a raised bed, this would be 10 times easier because I'm currently having to dig through extremely stony, kind of compacted clay, and it's a lot of work. What I am going to be doing is kind of dug out a little bit more than I need for these tomatoes. And in inside, I'm going to basically put a bit of potting mix, uh, some perlite, vermiculite, and really good silver grow compost, just to give them that extra kind of boost and make sure they don't get too shocked by going into this um, this very different environment in the clay soil. It's quite stony too. Uh, that's the plan. Now, folks, unfortunately, we do have a bit of a problem. I've been very busy. I've got all the cane supports in, which I was really happy about. It was quite difficult because they were so tall. <laughs> Lots of nearly smashing the glass panes in the roof. Fortunately, nothing bad happened. All the tomatoes are in. Pretty happy with the spacing, but the issue that we have is with the compaction of this clay. And I did wonder if this was going to be a bit of a problem. Basically, the ground here hasn't been watered or anything like that since I dug it all over. This whole entire area within the greenhouse, I dug over when I was building the greenhouse foundation. I removed loads of stones and I was obviously treading on it an awful lot, lots of um, you know, heavy works going on. And all of this soil has just become really compact clay. And you can see in the middle there, I thought maybe I'd dig a little channel and you know, try and have a bit of an irrigation channel in here. And I watered this about 15 minutes ago and you can see the water is still sat there. I've got a fork and been kind of like forking down to try and get the water down. And even that's not really helped. You can see there's some fork marks there. There's lots of forks, <laughs> fork marks under that water as well. So I'm hoping that this is just a teething issue. And if I continue to soak this over time with the addition of lots of organic matter on top as well, I'm hoping it will be drawn down through the soil. But please, if you've got any ideas or theories about the best way I could solve this, that would be really appreciated because I'm really worried that I'm going to water this and basically all the water is just going to run down where you can see that is the low point and where the water currently, currently kind of flows and then it goes under the foundation. The reason it does that is because I built the greenhouse deliberately not square so that uh, the water would run down the gutters and then into the water butts, which aren't yet hooked up. But that will be an easy enough problem to solve because when I do put a proper raised bed in here, uh, I can make the raised bed square and level. And so that should prevent a lot of the water running off like that. But what do I do for now while well, it's just clay? Any ideas, please do let me know. <sighs> trying to get sat down properly. <laughs> I'm quite tired. It's been very, very hot. I did, I, at some point though, I got really accustomed to the heat. I've been absolutely loving it. And um, I think maybe as well, when I watered in here, it really brought the temperature of the greenhouse down a little bit, really, really nice. I'm not too worried about the clay soil and the compaction. What I'm gonna do is continue to do a little bit more forking, get some fork holes down there. And as well, the age old classic recycling old plastic bottles. Popping those in the ground upside down is a great way to get that water nice and low down. And it's kind of like a poor man's tomato halo, if you like. <laughs> All of these are in though, and I'm just so happy. I've got some basil and some marigolds sprinkled in here. And I'm just so happy. I can't stop smiling actually, like seeing this greenhouse finally start to come together. I've just been thinking back over the last few minutes about you know, and how much bother I had with this greenhouse and what a, an absolute pain it was to get together. But it looks amazing. My parents have been downloaded today as well and I'm really happy because I've just given them a load of plants. I'm like, take all of these plants, take them off my hands, the chilies, the tomatoes, get them out of here. I've got too many. So um, that was really nice. They're doing some more work at the end and I'm sure I'll show you that in a tour soon. But now what I need to do, get loads of mulch on here. I'm gonna put some compost down as well as mulch and hopefully that'll really help to sort the soil out in here over time and improve that structure. But just thank you ever so much for watching. An extra special thank you to my Chili Pepper tier patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Michael, 
Andrew Lee and new Chili Pemetier patrons, both Denise from Let's Grow Home and Mel Summerson. Thank you so, so much, honestly. Um, just absolutely amazing. Uh, every time I get a notification about a new patron, I'm like dancing around the house. I'm like, yes, we're up to 25 now. And a long time ago, I said, if we get to 50 patrons, <laughs> I never thought this would happen, but well, it's starting to look at maybe a bit more likely. I said I would eat one of my, the, I, would, I said I would eat the hottest pepper that I'm growing this year, which is a seven pot bubble gum. And hopefully some of those do come <laughs> to ripen, but hopefully we don't get to 50 patrons. If we could stop at 49, that would be perfect. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time.